All right, guys, uh, welcome back. So I want to talk today briefly about Tim O'Brien's The Things They Carried. Now, this is a long, long story, but one that I think is one of the more important pieces of fiction, at least short fiction, of the 20th century. It's a story of Vietnam, but more importantly, it's a story about what we carry internally inside of us, right? So we think the title of The Things They Carried. And the story brilliantly starts off with all of the things that the soldiers physically carry, right? Um, we've got the love letters that Lieutenant Cross carries. We've got uh, the P-38 can openers, pocket knives, heat tabs, wristwatches, dog tags, mosquito repellent, chewing gum, candy, cigarettes, salt tablets, packets of Kool-Aid, lighters, matches, sewing kits, yada, yada, yada. We get all of these standard issue items. But then we also get things that each individual soldier carries that aren't standard issue. And it's these items that give us a little insight into who these characters are, right? Take Henry Dobbins, for example. Henry Dobbins, who was a big man, carried extra rations. He was especially fond of canned peaches and heavy syrup over pound cake, right? So not only does this let us know what he likes to eat, it kind of lets us know his personality, right? He's got a sweet tooth. But more than that, it's almost kind of childlike. Um, and when we think of the atrocity that was Vietnam, the death and destruction of Vietnam, the Vietnam conflict, we don't normally think of canned peaches with heavy syrup, right? It's that nice little detail that lets us in on the character's interiority. We've got Ted Lavender, who is killed, right? Ironically, he's the one that's the most scared. He carries around pot. He carries around morphine. He carries around extra medical supplies. We get their guns, we get their helmets, what they carry. Notice all of this great detail. That's why I love this story. But what is more important is what everybody carries inside of them, their internal struggle. At the core of the story is longing. Who is longing for what? Well, the soldiers are longing to escape Vietnam. That's obvious. They're longing for a reprieve. But Lieutenant Cross is longing for the love of Martha. The girl back home that represents the life that he had, that represents innocence, that represents uh, a reality of goodness and morality that exists before Ted Lavender is killed outside of 10K. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I could be mistaken. Everyone humped photographs, right? Now, again, when he says hump, to carry, to to uh, lift things, to walk with it. Everybody's got these photographs. And Lieutenant Cross talks about his photograph of Martha. But it's an unrequited love. She does not like him back. So he is carrying all of this extra gear, right? He's carrying all the soldier gear, his gun, while inside of him he's distracted. He's carrying this love for this woman who doesn't love him and that can't love him because he is in Vietnam and she's back home. This distracts him. And the entire story talks about this distraction and what this distraction cause, causes. Uh, we get the idea that Lieutenant Cross, before Ted Lavender is shot, is a pretty lenient officer. He's a young officer. He lets his men do whatever he wants. And then Ted Lavender is killed. And then at the end of the story, he says that everything is going to be different now. He's carrying the burden. And think of the last name, Lieutenant Cross. It's definitely a Jesus Messianic reference, Cross. Uh, as Christ carried the burden of sin. So too does Lieutenant Cross carry the burden of making sure his soldiers get out safely and one of them doesn't. So this story is about weight that is carried both physically and internally. And which one is more important? Well, uh, Dan or Tim O'Brien argues that what we carry inside of us, that internal struggle is way more important. All right. This is also a story about how it is not necessarily romantic to die for one's country. Um, how that notion of the soldier falling on the ground and, and, and dying admirably and nobly is not there, at least for the speaker, right? When Ted Lavender gets shot... Um, Kiowa, the Native American soldier, keeps remarking, boom, down, boom, down. That was it. There was no fanfare. There was no, nothing you see in the movies, just boom. 
down, right? It gives a sense of meaninglessness. It gives a sense of purposelessness. And the body, in a sense, becomes something weighted down, a dead weight that now they must carry with them both physically until they bury him and internally, which Lieutenant Cross does. There is so much here that they carry that it, we can't possibly go over everything. But what I want you to notice as you go through the story and as you think about the story are how the things they carry both internally and externally, how does that define them as characters? Can you pick out a few details of Kiowa, for instance, who carries the rabbit foot? Or uh, Rat Kylie, who carried brandy and M&Ms? Until he was shot, Ted Lavender carried the Starlight Scope, which weighed 6.3 pounds with an aluminum case. Henry Dobbins carried his girlfriend's pantyhose wrapped around his neck as a comforter. Right? How do what they carry, do these soldiers, what they carry, how does that show a level of interiority? Because that's what I'm interested in. And when you think about your discussion question, how are the characters, can you pick two characters and how, um, you know, do they, would they interact? You can think about this idea of internal struggle. How would Ted Lavender, for instance, interact with young Goodman Brown? Or I'm sorry, not Ted Lavender. How would Lieutenant Cross, for instance, interact with young Goodman Brown? Just as young Goodman Brown is now carrying the madness brought on by his loss of faith, so too is Lieutenant Cross carrying this weight, the sadness at both Martha, losing Martha, right, his, his faith kind of figure, and losing his faith in the war, losing his idea that what they're doing there has purpose, losing the idea that what they're doing there is meaningful, right? By watching Ted Lavender get shot as a result of Lieutenant Cross's distraction, just only thinking of Martha, Lieutenant Cross becomes wakened, in a sense, to the idea that life can just end at any moment. And there's no sense in worrying about a girl back home when you're humping it through the jungle. When you've got all of these weights on you, the machine guns and, and medical kits and starlight scopes and M&Ms pressing down on you, and you've got these internal pangs to the longing, the weight of survival, the weight to believe in a God, the weight of crying, the weight of crying in front of another man, the weight of crying for your mother and father. All of these things are weighing on these soldiers. All of these things are what they carry. And what they carry tells us a hell of a lot about who these characters are. So as you're going through this story, I want you to think about that. I want you to think about what is more important, the things that they carry physically or the things they carry internally. And how does Ted Lavender, uh, I'm sorry, not Ted Lavender, how does Lieutenant Cross change by virtue of what he was carrying and what he is now carrying inside of him as a result of one of his soldiers getting killed? I hope you all enjoyed this story. It's one of my favorites. Um, I wish I could discuss it with you in person. That'd be awesome. But I hope this gave you an idea of how to approach the story. I know we can't get a lot done in 10 minutes, but that's all we got. So, all right, guys, have a good one.